This planet looks lifeless. Lifeless, brick red, and very, very dry, like a desert. But only until you reach one of the poles of the red planet. That's where you come across a seemingly endless ice cap. So if you've been imagining Mars as an extremely dry place, you might need to change your opinion. Scientists think there could have been a lot of water on Mars in the past. What makes them think so? They found loads of ancient river valley networks and lake beds on the surface of the red planet. Plus, on Mars, there are minerals and rocks that could have only formed in liquid water. Mars might even have experienced terrible floods 3.5 billion years ago. These days, there's still some water on the red planet. It's true that Mars's atmosphere is too thin for this water to stay in its liquid form on the surface of the planet. But under the surface, it's a different matter. You can find water under the surface of the planet in its polar regions. The only place where this water is visible is at the North Polar Ice Cap. Also, sometimes, salty water flows down crater walls and hillsides. And there are tiny quantities of water in the planet's atmosphere. But it only exists as vapor. Anyway, now that we know for sure there is liquid water on Mars, could we probably use this water during a human-operated mission to the Red Planet? This way, the spaceship coming from Earth wouldn't have to bring its own water. It would make its cargo way, way lighter, which, in turn, would decrease the cost of the mission. The spaceship would just need to take enough water to get to the Red Planet and bring along the equipment astronauts will need to filter Martian water to make it drinkable. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The main problem is that the water found on Mars is salty. It might even be as salty as the oceans on our own planet. But these salts aren't what you can find on Earth. If a person consumed a certain amount of them, they would be highly toxic to the human body. On our planet, these salts are formed as byproducts of rocket fuel, as well as in road flares and fireworks. Naturally, they only occur in very dry areas. If there are no particular bacteria to break them down, these substances accumulate year after year, and their concentration in water is constantly increasing. But in theory, it's possible to purify even such water. The process of filtration could help the astronauts get rid of 90% of harmful substances. Then, they could use a UV disinfection unit. This would also help to get rid of any foreign microbes, if there are any, that might be hiding in the water. This stage would not only protect the astronauts, but also prevent them from bringing any dormant Martian microbes back to Earth. In other words, future travelers to Mars shouldn't have too many problems with drinking water on the Red Planet, but only if they bring the right purification equipment that can deal with any water quality. Because however bad running out of water in the middle of a desert is, experiencing it on another planet sounds much more terrifying. Now, I've got another question. If there is water on Mars, might there be other worlds in our solar system where we can find water? Sure, let's visit some of them. We'll start with Europa, one of the largest moons of Jupiter. Astronomers consider Europa one of the most promising places in the solar system to search for new life forms. All because this moon has a huge saltwater ocean with a depth of 40 to 100 miles. Yes, it is hidden under a layer of ice that is estimated to be from 10 to 20 miles thick. But it is still potentially habitable. Astronomers claim that plumes of water erupt from cracks in the ice shell and release the contents of the moon's ocean into space. There's also some evidence that the ocean might have warm water radiating from the moon's equator, which also means there could be not just life, but complex life on Europa. Well, I guess we'll find all about it in 2030 when NASA's Europa Clipper will reach the satellite and conduct its own investigation. And we're moving on to Enceladus, Saturn's moon. People have known about this tiny, sleepy world since 1789. The diameter of the moon is a mere 310 miles, but despite its small size, it's one of the most intriguing places in our solar system because it too is likely to host a warm and salty liquid ocean. 
Watery eruptions happen on Enceladus rather regularly. The moon spews from its ice geysers more than 1,000 tons of water every hour. This water is mixed with organic molecules, salt, and other substances. Astronomers think that the ocean might be warm thanks to the tidal influence of Saturn. The planet's tug may cause hydrothermal activity, warming the oceans. There are also places in the solar system that might have water on their surface, but its presence hasn't been confirmed yet. For example, Ganymede, another moon of Jupiter. It's the largest moon in the solar system. It's even bigger than Mercury. Astronomers have long believed there is an ocean beneath the 100-mile-thick ice crust covering the moon. And in 2015, Ganymede's aurorae activity also hinted that this ocean could be warm and salty. Unlike on Europa, ice geyser activity on Ganymede hasn't been spotted yet. The reason might be a much greater distance between Jupiter and Ganymede than that between the gas giant and Europa. Also, there are the maybes. Those are worlds where there seems to be water, but we don't know to what extent it is liquid. One of such places is Callisto, which, have you guessed it, is another of Jupiter's moons. It's pretty far from its parent planet and also doesn't get as much radiation as other moons. Plus, it has a magnetic field, which definitely adds some protection. Astronomers claim there is water in this faraway world, but the moon's lack of geological activity might mean that it can't have an ocean without some kind of space antifreeze. In other words, all that water on Jupiter's satellite can be a huge, and I mean huge, chunk of ice. Now, let's visit another space body. But this time, it's not a moon, but a dwarf planet. Look, this is Ceres. Even though people have known about it since 1801, its small size made it difficult to study. Until not so long ago, this space body was considered to be a rocky world. But after the Dawn spacecraft arrived at Ceres in 2015 and examined the dwarf planet, a new theory appeared. Ceres might be less of a rocky ball and more of a watery planet covered with an icy mantle and a slushy ocean moving beneath. If it's true, Ceres could become the nearest to Earth world with an ocean. Titan is Saturn's largest moon. It has some of the most abundant pools of liquid in the solar system. Its surface is a slurry of water ice and ice made of lots of different compounds, for example, hydrocarbons. The satellite also has dense clouds that regularly burst with rain. And if you visited this place, you'd see rivers, lakes, and an ocean made up of methane and ethane hiding under the icy crust. Now let's talk about poor Pluto, which has changed its status a couple of times. When NASA's New Horizons flew by the dwarf planet in 2015, it discovered a hint of something totally unexpected, an ocean. Pluto is an icy world. But there are two things that make scientists think that Pluto might have once hosted an ocean. First, a theory that Pluto and its five moons could have been formed out of the same materials after a powerful collision. And second, the tidal forces between Pluto and its largest moon, Charon, even better, this leaves open the possibility that the ocean is still around. We just need more time to examine the dwarf planet. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.